Hi guys, it's Divine Diva 222. Welcome to my platform. It is 4.50 p.m. on a Tuesday afternoon. It is August 23 of 2022. I have a message here from Holy Spirit. And it says, the simple yet powerful law of cause and effect means that everything is in relationship and that every action on earth has a consequence. And even in the spirit world, there is a consequence for every action taken on your behalf. Right now, you're facing conditions that were set in motion by past decisions that you had made. Consequences are coming into being in your favor. They will remind you that making good choices and listening to your intuition will pay off. And if some things are a little off and uncertain, know that whatever you are facing, you can step beyond it just by using your imagination and acting on that instead of reacting to what is being presented or what is not being presented to you. Have you learned how to become patient? Because patience, let me tell you folks, is a virtue. Everything you think and do has a far reaching repercussion in the webs of our lives. You need to move to higher ground and have faith that what goes around will come around. The universe is always self-correcting itself. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that what is all about? With God, nothing is set in stone. If you show him and you prove to him that you are worthy of receiving the abundance that's coming towards you, if you are worthy of receiving that person you've been praying for, then show up and show off. And as I said, that was two, two, two on the timer. I wanna also tell you that right now is not the right time. You might meet someone from the past. You might bump into them purposely, but it's not the right time. This person is healing. They have a lot of inner work to do. This person doesn't want to change their physical aspects. Okay, they just want to jump on, but you can't because if you did all the work and they didn't, they don't deserve you. Somebody deserves you at your best. They need to be at their best. I want to also talk to all of you about people in this world that it's never ended. It all began in Genesis when the serpent came in to misguide God's most beautiful creation. Because Satan is jealous, he's envious, he has nothing. God has everything. And I wanna tell you that it's never ended that it's always was, it always has been. Cain and Abel. Read the story of Cain and Abel. You guys have to believe that whatever happened to the Bible, that it's carried forth onto generation and generation and generation. It didn't stop. Many of you were very religious to now it's the worldly pleasures that you seek. And you already found out that it's lead you into hell, in the pits of fire, because you're suffering the consequences. There are two types of people here on this earth. And I want to describe the two types of people. There are those who make your life easier and then, then those who make your life harder. Then there are those that have money and those who don't. But I want to tell you that people say this, but I want to 
explain to you that the truth is there's groups. There's a group of people, okay? There's only one grouping that matters. That is those who do not know Jesus and those who do. And in these last days, you are either one who loves yourself or you love the Lord first. The group of people who love themselves find themselves, well, let's say the group of people who love themselves, they found, they're found in the Bible and in Timothy. And it states that in the last days, they will come times of difficulty for people because they are lover, lovers of themselves. Lovers of money. They're proud. They're arrogant. They're abusive. They're disobedient to their parents. They're ungrateful, unholy. They're heartless. They're unpeasable. They're slanderous. And they have no self-control. They're brutal. They don't love Okay. They're treacherous, they're reckless, they're swollen with conceit. They're lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. They have the appearance of godliness, but denying God's power. But denying its power avoids such people. The first thing we see about those in the first group is that they are lovers of themselves. This is the defining characteristic of those in the first group. Everything else they do flows out of the need to fulfill their own desires. And this leads to people loving money more than God, loving pleasures more than God, being proud and heartless against God. The rest of the characteristics mentioned on what I just said is that the truth is that all of our hearts are naturally that way. We do not know Jesus on the whole. We do what is best for ourselves. Then that's when we become selfish and seek only to fulfill our own pleasures. For those who are followers of Jesus, he becomes our first and most important priority. God becomes the base and center of everything we do. I can hear some people saying, oh, he or she is too godly. Just because we don't do drugs, just because we don't gossip, just because we don't get drunk to a stoop, doesn't mean that we are boring. It doesn't mean that because we believe in God that we do not know our limits and how to set them. Because while other priorities in our life change, God does not. However, for those in the first group I just explained, their desires and pleasures become first in theirs and whatever and whomever makes them feel good and satisfied becomes the center of their attention. They are the lovers of themselves. And the thing is about them, they are actually the ones that look like They are for God. They appear godly. However, regarding this, this is just surface level. It looks good on the outside, but their hearts are evil. And Jesus talks about a group like this in the Bible. The group of Pharisees with the same problem. He explained in Matthew 23 verse 27. He speaks about the scribes and the Pharisees, hypocrites. God calls them whitewashed tombs. 
which on the outside appears beautiful, but in the inside, they are full of dead men's bones. Their uncleanness. Okay, it's just like the outside of a building. It's brand new. It has a fresh coat of paint, but in the inside, it's full of roaches, rodents, and whatnot. These people are dead bodies. And I want to tell you that our heart does matter more than how we make ourselves look on the outside because I've one, I'm one person that have shown all of you what I'm talking about. I can look like anybody on the outside. I can slap a wig. I can put on makeup. I can wear my short hair. I can braid up my hair. I can look like anybody on the outside. But it's my heart that matters. It's the soul. It's like offering you a hot meal and my house looks clean, even where my food is in is clean, the area where the food is in, 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 in it's clean. And I proceed to pack you that hot meal and you look at my hands and see my fingernails, how disgusting and dirty it is, full of dirt. Would you take that meal from me, 1111, on the timer as I said that? Of course you wouldn't. Because while the outside of everything looks clean, the inside is a whole hot mess. Jesus is trying to show you the same thing, but yet you keep closing the door on his face. He's trying to tell you no matter how godly a person appears to be and speaks of God, that you need to use your discernment. If our hearts are unclean, just like the first group that I have just described to you, these are full of people who may look godly but have unclean hearts. The second group, are the people that loves Jesus because these are the, the, the people that are going to love Jesus in these last days. And it shall be God that declares and he will outpour his spirit on all the flesh of your sons and your daughters. Now listen to this part because I get mocked so many times. I've been called a liar. 12 to 2 on the timer as I said that. God says in these last days, it shall be God declares that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh of your sons and daughters that shall prophesy your young men and shall see visions. Old men shall dream. This group of people will have the spirit poured out on the Old Testament. Holy Spirit rested on people and equipped them for the job God had for them. After the job was accomplished, the Holy Spirit would then leave. Then here comes the New Testament. This is what's going on into the world. God is appointing his sons and daughters with visions to prophesy, to see what's coming. It's Noah's Ark all over again, building the ark and people making fun of him. But sadly, many of them, did none of them actually, thank you, Holy Spirit, didn't make it onto the ark. 1333 on the timer as I said that, because they were too busy living a life of drunk, of fornication, of living like they're the ones that orchestrate everything on, the, on this earth, that they run everything while they're all running themselves to hell. The time is here where the Bible is repeating itself and you are all repeating the same things in the Bible. And I feel pity for all of you that sit there and still mock those that have a platform and using their time to tell you, look, I love you. I want you to win too. You can't compete with individuals that want you to win too. You all want to listen to those that talk about money, talk about giving to the church. Let's talk about being enlightened, waking up to who you truly are. Let's talk about all the wrongdoings that you're doing on somebody else's behalf. 
Let's talk about being Judas's and Peter's in the Bible. Let's talk about hanging those that have done things for you all of your life. And now you hate them because somebody else hates them. Now you want to plot against those because they're being plotted against. You're all people pleasers, fly monkeys, puppies, puppets, and you're slaves of those that have money because you see money as your master. You all have given up on God. You all have given up on hope and faith. And you are the ones that walk into church and preach while God is putting his daughters and sons out into the world to prophesy. You're all making fun of them. In the New Testament, moving forward, which is also the last days of the Holy Spirit, is going to dwell inside of believers. Spirit of God now lives inside of them and permanently eclipse believers to follow him. This is the group that's going to receive mighty outpouring from God. And if you read Acts 2, 17, it's that, that some followers of Jesus were prophesying and seeing visions. God will do that and so much more through those who follow Jesus. So the question really becomes, which group are you in? There are those in group one who are lovers of self while they do what feels good and right. In the end, it leads them to hell in a life without God. Then there are those in the second group that looks at Jesus and sees how beautiful he is. They see that despite of their sin, that Jesus loves them. He came and lived a perfect life, died the death. Okay. Deserved by taking on the wrath of God, then rose from the grave by faith. They trust that Jesus has done that. Now they have the Holy Spirit. It may seem as if the second group is missing out because they do not get to fulfill all of their own desires. But however, this group receives something so much better. They get a mighty outpouring by the hand of the Lord. So last time, let me ask you, there are only two types of people in two sets of groups in this world. Those who love themselves and those who love Jesus. Which group are you in? And I want to tell all of you, don't be silent about your love for God. Don't allow anything to silence your testimony. Instead, live by the word and do not feel ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God for salvation. This is a message to everyone who believes the gospel is the only way that sinful men can be reconciled to God and with God to have eternal life with him. This is just not another opinion. Whatever you say, whatever you believe in, it does not matter. The truth is the truth. What is is what is. This is not another opinion of mine or another person. It's a fact. And this news is good. This world doesn't need another another uh, another self-help book it needs people that have been called by God who will stand up for God without shame who will preach Jesus because this world doesn't need any more politicians with dirty tongues this world needs to hear the gospel and how will they hear it 
It's going to be through the children of God. So I'm going to ask you again. What side are you going to be on? Because the time is near where they're going to try to gain control of this world with all of the people in it. And they're going to place and intimidate you with fear. And it all began with COVID. Many of you running in line for this injection, you all had no hope and no faith in God. You all wanted a spit game talking about you have visions of God and you have visions of nothing. And those that uttered these words are the ones that caught COVID. This is a message from the Holy Spirit. Be steadfast in prayer, for he will be sending forth signs. Though you may stumble, but you will never fall. For the Lord upholds you with his hands. God bless and have a good evening.